Good evening, or morning, or whenever you're watching this. Um, let's have the review of AEW Dynamite for September the 16th, 2020. This show, this show was, I mean, it's AEW. Um, it's always breezy, really easy to watch, but it was mostly a one-match show. I mean, the main event was, was good. It was good, actually really great. Um, in the main event, they really used the stipulation well, but from... But let's start from the beginning, because that's the best place to start. Uh, the opening match is the Jurassic Express versus FTR uh, non-title. The, uh, the commentary was saying if, Luch if Jurassic Express uh, win, they're getting a future title shot. The commentary put it over well. It's your classic FTR uh, Jurassic Express match. Uh, they beat up on Jungle Boy a bit. Makes a hot take the Luchasaurus, FDR cheat, finally winning, cheating, through win. Uh, they're beating him down, the Young Bucks come out and super kick the referee. Uh, the Young Bucks are turning heel. Jurassic Express looked really good. Um, I mean, they're close on getting a title shot. They're maybe not there quite yet. But this was, you know, your basic a. Um, Jurassic Express FTR match. Sorry, I I came home. Um, I was out doing some errands today, and I came home when the match was already on. But from what I could tell, I mean, it was a good match. FTR doesn't really have a lot of bad matches. Neither did Jurassic Express come together. What do you have? A pretty good match. Uh, next up, we get a match between Frankie Kazarian and Adam Hangman Page, uh, with Kenny Omega being on commentary. Uh, this match was put over as one half of your first AEW Tag Team Champions, Frankie Kazarian. Versus one half of your second AEW Tag Team Champions, Adam Hangman Page. Hangman Page and Kenny Omega actually beat him on the Jericho Cruise. Uh, Christ, uh, a while ago. Um, six months ago, I believe. And this was a really good match. I mean, Drake Kazarian's been wrestling for ever. Uh, I remember seeing him on TNA when he was with Raven and Serotonin. Uh, when he was Kaz, K-A-Z, and he used to do the uh, Back to the Future as a finisher, a flipping top rope rock bottom. You can, uh, it's also sometimes known as a C4. When you do a flipping rock bottom, I mean, it was a good match. Uh, Kenny was on commentary, it really put it over well. How he's like, I don't really want a team with Hangman anymore, and Hangman still wants the team, because, well, Hangman's won a title. His only title in his career on a major level was with, Hang was with Omega. And the storyline is they're friends, but they don't like each other, if that makes sense. Um, they used to be friends, but they've fallen apart. Their principles have changed. Hangman started drinking, started doing different things, and Omega doesn't drink. It's a very different lifestyle. Uh, they were friends at one point. They've grown apart. Kind of like you and your high school friends. Yeah, your high school friends were great and everything. You can probably see each other again and be polite in general, but eventually it's you're not the same people that you were in high school. Uh, so that was the story of the match. I mean, it was a good match. Um, they have very truly good, talented performers in there. Because uh, Arian's been around a long time, so has... Hey, man... Hangman eventually gets the ring, the win with a buckshot lariat. Um, Hangman, Kazarian has a lot of his spots. The, the bring in uh, cutter, the jumping springboard DDT to the inside. Some really good spots, really good story. Uh, Omega on commentary put it over better. And after the match, when Hangman is celebrating, Omega just gets up and leaves. And they're saying, well, something's going on here. Uh, these guys used to be really good friends. That would be Hangman and Kenny Omega. And now they're not. Um, after the break, we see MJF in action. He's taking on... I believe his name was Sean Dean. Um, but the match didn't last. Um, MJF, you know, coming out to the ring was being his normal prickish self. Making people kiss his ring. The Dynamite Diamond Ring. And, you know, hamming it up being a general, a general heel. Or, as I said on Twitter, a general piece of shit. Um, or a prick. Just, you know, doing the normal thing. After the match, he wins in about 30 seconds. The commentary is being, you know, he doesn't get paid by the hour. Yada, yada, yada. And, and he doesn't. He cuts a promo saying, 
it looks like everyone here in AEW has a stable, which a lot of the way to have success in AEW is to have a stable. The Dark Order's been killing it as of late. Uh, there's the Best Friends, there's the Inner Circle, there's the Elite. Uh, and so he's done a formal Wolfpack. Now, I know he said Wolfpack, everyone's thinking, Oh, he's bringing back the Wolfpack. Oh no, it's the NWO. The Red and Black is back. It's too sweet for life. And all that fun Wolfpack jazz. Um, what was in my mind instantly was it uh, the one-man Wolfpack uh, from Hangover. <laughs> the Hangover movies. I'm a one-man Wolfpack. Oh! And that. <laughs> Pretty, really good promo. And MGF is really good at being promos. Um, he finished it off with saying, you know, in a stable or, or as a lone wolf, I'm still better than you and you know it and, and left. Uh, really put MJF over as a killer. Uh, and etc. Before that match, uh, before that match or right after that match, uh, we see a private party tending to Matt Hardy, who's apparently been injured. And Jericho and Hager come over and go, oh, we're really sorry you're injured. And they were as sarcastic as, as you can be. Um, with Jericho saying to Matt Hardy, I'm really sorry that you got injured because last week the thing was Jericho and Hagar or Hager, uh, the former Jack Swagger, are going for the tag titles and they were taking on Private Party. And he's holding his back and going, you know, I'm really sorry that you're injured. You know, Matt, I really don't know what happened. I'm really sorry for your injury, man. I'm sorry that you're going to have to take time off. And there was that. Um, AEW does a really good job of it being all action all the time. Or at least that's what it seems like. All the time there's always action. There's not a whole lot of downtime. There's not a lot of promos. And when they are promos, it's MJF. Um, so next, up next we get Jericho on his the ring. Comes out with Jeff Hager to take on Private Party. Private Party, of course, their manager, Matt Hardy, is injured. That was the story of the match. Um, really good back and forth match here. Um, it was a good match. Nothing, nothing to blow your socks off. Uh, I said before it was a one-match show, and, and it was. It's a, Dynamite's always really great to watch, uh, but when it's a one-match show, you can tell. Jericho and uh, Hager pick up the win. Quick, easy. Uh, private Party show a lot. Merck. One of the Private Party guys, i sorry, I don't know which is which. Um, I think it was Isaiah Quinn, the guy who wears the tails, took it off. Took his tails off at one point. They're digging deep, they're digging deep. Got a lot of Jericho. Jericho's made those guys look like a million bunks. Hager's always good. Uh, Jericho and Hager win the match with the Judas Effect. They have loaded it a couple times. Jericho, you know, keeps them in the walls of Jericho. Uh, a little too long and just a beat down. But that's to be expected. And you understand that Jericho's and Hager are going after the tag titles. And that's pretty much the whole segment. Um... Right after that, we get a match between Thunder Rosa and Eva Elise for the NWA Women's Title. This match was, you know, it was a good match. Thunder Rosa always looks really good. So does Eva Elise in the match. Uh, we get Eva Elise coming out with Diamantes with their uh, their medals from the Women's Tag Team Championship or the Winners Tag Team Tournament. Uh, it looked really good. Thunder Rosa did pick up the win. The match was, was good. Thunder Rosa is a good worker. Eva Lee is a good worker. Sorry, I was mostly playing with my phone when this happened. When this happened. Uh, a lot of Dynamite didn't really do it for me except the main event uh, and the last segment. I mean, it was a good match. We get Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa. <laughs> we get uh, Eva Lee's and Diamante beating Thunder Rosa down and Sita makes the shave. This goes into next week we're going to get Thunder Rosa and Akaru Shida. Hikaru Shida. Going, facing the, uh... Ivalese and Diamantes. That's what that match built for. Uh, good idea. You know, you want to build... Going forward. Uh, for next week, just so people know what's going on. Good match. Uh, right up next, we get a segment. It's told early on in the broadcast that next week we're going to see a six-man tag team action. Uh, we're going to get John team with John Moxley captaining, taking on team captain by Lance Archer. So we get that segment. Lance Archer's going to answer your questions. Well, Lance Archer is a Jack, Jake, uh, Jake 
the snake robert is going to answer your questions referring to the six man and you know lance archer comes out and beats up somebody um you know normal lance archer entrance comes out gets pissed off beats you know takes someone out from the crowd beats them up uh, and then jake comes out and he cuts a promo saying you know there are times in life and business that you end up working with someone that you don't necessarily like or you find yourself with a strange friend he doesn't exactly say that. He says you find yourself in bed with someone that normally you wouldn't. Which actually kind of makes sense. We've all worked with people that we don't necessarily agree with. Or I have. I'm sure you have as well. You don't ex- ex- exactly agree with their principles. It happens all the time in business. Um, I've done business plans for school because I've done a business course at school. And I've done it with people I don't really agree with all the principles. Or you end up working with someone that you don't exactly get their message, but you believe it's for the greater good. Uh, the best example I can think of this right off the top of my head is Superman and Batman. Um, I'm a huge comic book fan and have been for a long time. Um, I own at least three or $4,000 of comic books. Uh, they're all in Newfoundland right now because right now I'm in Halifax. But do you really think Superman will work with Batman if he didn't have to? It was it for the greater good. That's the idea. And he says, well, right now I'm going to be working with Team Taz. Uh, My two partners are Ricky Starks and Brian Cage. And Taz comes out and says, you know, Jake, uh, I don't like you. I don't like Lance Archer. But my guys want to shot at John Moxley. And we're going to take him out. So Moxley comes out. He does the whole, he comes out through the crowd like always and gets attacked by a cameraman who turns out to be Ricky Starks. And then he gets beat down by both Ricky Starks and Brian Cage. That goes on for a couple of minutes, and then Will Hobbs uh, shows up to make the save. Will Hobbs has been on Dark, as of late, just got signed today. Uh, was in the Casino Battle Royale. You know, they really, you know, showed him something there at the Casino Battle Royale, and that happened. And he goes, yeah, and fights the two off with a chair. And then Moxley cuts the promo saying, look, I've got one of my partners. This guy's crazy. This is Will Hobbs, the the meanest man from Oakland, I believe. He says there's something to that thing. And goes, yeah, one of my partners right there, Taz. I'll see you next week. Oh, and my other partner is your favorite wrestler, Taz, Darby Allen. And because I know every time, every week, you're talking about Darby Allen, how you, how you don't like him, how you think he's... Essentially, if you're not watching Dynamite, this is your first time watching it. Every time something happens... Every week, you know, Ricky Starks is taking shots at Darby. He's taking shots at Darby. Taking shots at Darby. Uh, he comes up dressed up as Darby. Uh, so John says, you know what, Darby, I know you're watching. I know you're home. Get your ass to Jacksonville next week. We got work to do, essentially. And we're kicking, we're kicking some ass next week. Uh, which makes sense, because Moxley has teamed with Darby before. Will Hobbs, you know, he, put, he put Will Hobbs over uh, as a, being an ass kicker. And... Yeah, I'm looking forward to that match. Also, next week, we are going to see a match for the TNT Championship. Mr. Brody Lee takes on Orange Cassidy. You get a rundown of what's going to happen next week. They've also been pushing a late-night dynamite for next Tuesday after Inside the NBA on TNT. Now, I'm not sure if this is their, their idea of getting dark on TV, it will be interesting. It's late night dynamite. It might be a once a week show. Maybe to maybe to get some other things on late night TV. Late night TV is kind of a talk show thing, so it might be that. It it might be a bunch of like quote unquote dark matches. But I know TNT and AEW wants another hour, uh, not a three hour show, but like another hour of programming. Because uh, outside the NBA playoffs or basketball in general, AEW's I think one of their biggest ratings get so. Yeah, then it's main event time. It is a parking lot brawl between the best friends and Proud and Powerful. Best friends are already there when we cut there. After that, we get Proud and Powerful coming out, and they're all in white face paint, and then it hit me. They're not Proud and Powerful tonight. They're going all the way back to their violent, their violent hardcore LAX roots. Uh, I used to watch TNA. I watched a bunch of old TNA pay-per-views recently at work. Uh, for security, I get bored. 13-hour days, overnights. Yeah, 
nothing really to do. And when they were in the white paint, it, it, it's shit to do. Uh, this match was brutal. Uh, I haven't seen Proud and Powerful look this intense. This is the best I've seen Proud and Powerful look since coming to AEW. Uh, I was actually a little concerned, thinking that they were going to make Proud and Powerful look like a comedy act. No, this was the best I've seen them look ever. Um, it's a parking lot match, so you get people... You get people, you know, taking bumps into car windshields. You get people get taking bumps on the car hoods. You get a spot where, I believe, Ortiz... Oh, sorry. Yes, Ortiz power bombs tramp right onto a car hood. Out of a car, and that breaks. And you get people getting thrown in the car windshields. And it's it's a parking lot brawl. Um, people hitting each other with a bunch of stuff. It was violent. It was violent. It was a good, violent brawl. Um, if you like good violent brawls, this was great. This was LAX in their element. LAX has done some really insane stuff in TNA. At one point, they had a kid, uh, did like a cinematic where he got ran over by Homicide and Hernandez and Eddie Kingston. Um, and we also, before all this, we got a, that I had forgot, um, it was a talking statement between Eddie Kingston and his family. He said, I have three things to, to say when I have three points to make. Uh, one, I didn't lose the Battle Royal, the, bat, the, the Casino Battle Royal. Sorry, I was going to say Royal Rumble. Uh, this is the talkings of a madman. I didn't lose. Three, we, we've got family. We're a family here. We fight. He told the Butcher and the Blade to go get a victim. They take some jobber out and they bring him there and they beat him up. Um... He said next week it's going to be Lucha Brothers teaming and yeah, he tells uh, Braxton Sutter, The Blade. He tells The Blade something. Um, actually, it should be The bl the Blade, Black Braxton Sutter. I just can't chant Blade, 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 Blade. You can chant Braxton, Braxton, or Sutter, Sutter. Just chanting the blade is hard. I know he's a heel, but still. And he, you know, cuts the promo at the end. He goes to the blade. Braxton Sutter. Um, I've got my house in order. You need to get your house in order. And that, if you don't know what that's about, um, Braxton Sutter's wife is Allie. And on storylines, he's flirting with QT Marshall. And I think we're getting something where the Butcher and the Blade are going to be a tag team chasing the Natural Nightmares. Uh, that's where I even like that storyline because QT Marshall's got a bit doughy. He's balding. He's out of shape. He's older. Um, Allie's smoking hot. It gives hopes that that all out of shape, balding, middle-aged men have hot chances with hot women. And I'm balding and middle-aged. So yeah. Uh, back to the parking lot match. It was great. You get spots in there. People are flying around. It's a brawl. It basically breaks down. Where Ortiz has Chuck Taylor's head um, laying up against the rear end of a car by the trunk. And he goes and he grabs a lead pipe. And he starts nicking on the ground. Making that click, 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 click sound. And it's by the... The trunk of a car, so you're thinking he's going to take that and he's going to, you know, essentially hit him in the head with a lead pipe. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to hit the back of a car, crack skull. That's what they were putting over. But he's about to do it. The trunk pops. The trunk opens up. You've, I'm assuming you have a car. We've all we've all seen a trunk open of a car, and out pops Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy jumps and punches him. Hits, hits him with the orange punch. You know what the orange punch is? It's a Superman punch. Hits him with that. And you can see there's something on the sand. I'm thinking, that's a coal miner's glove. Because wrestling, coal miner's glove. No, it's a chain. It's a chain. So then Chuck Taylor is with Ortiz. They're on the pickup. And they have a piece of plywood. Got an inch thick plywood. And he does basically a kryptonite crunch, a reverse pile, a reverse tombstone. Where he's back, it's hits here, basically a reverse tombstone. Onto the plow into the back of the truck. So he's up on the box. There's like a little box. He jumps. 
goes through the plywood, taking some of that cushion because you don't want to hit the back of your neck and the back of the pan of a truck. You, yeah, it's brain damage. But the match was brutal. Uh, there's spots for like Chuck Taylor or Beretta um, goes back first into a windshield and you see his back's all bloody. The, it's a bloodbath. Well, not, not a bloodbath, but a, a violent match. Not something that uh, you'd ever want. I hope AEW had enough sense to gimmick parts of it. Gimmick, you know, maybe you circle glass for the glass. Maybe put a piece of plywood, cut the top off the car and put a piece of plywood on top and put it back over so you give that little bit of leeway so you don't kill yourself. And at the very end of the match, the whole feud was set up between because Santana and Ortiz beat up Chuck Taylor's car, his mom's minivan. And after that, you see him, all three of them go in. The best friends, the orange guests, go in to Sue, Sue Taylor's minivan. See, it's a new one, obviously, because the other one had was jacked up and beat the shit. Uh, go in, and they drive off, and at the end, um, Sue's going to give him the thumbs up. And says he flips him off and drives off. Uh, the match was violent. Like I said, it was a one-match show. The very last match. And the Moxley Archer promos were worth watching. MJF has a good promo because he's MJF. But enjoyable show. Good two hours. Uh, nothing too long. Nothing terrible. Uh, really good show. Uh, I don't know why Burt Baker wasn't on the show. But besides that, it was a really good show. You can check it out. And uh, you all have a great night. And I will uh, talk to you again. Bye.